Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I want to show you about input effects. Now if you saw my previous video about taking a look at the audio interface that you use and taking a look at what effects may be part of that interface or that driver, kind of led me to this sort of question of, well could we do the same kind of thing inside Reaper? And the answer is yes you can. So let's just say for example you want to apply a compressor to your signal on the way in and you want that to be committed to the actual recording, well that can be done through input effects inside Reaper. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate a couple of uses for input effects, show you how to set things up and what could be done with them. So let's take a look at all that right now. So the first and most important thing you need to remember is that anything you apply to an input effect is going to be committed to the track that you record. So for example, if you use a compressor, that will be applied to the signal on the way in and committed to the recording. The same goes if we use something like a guitar amp sim, or we use an effect like a flanger or a phaser or a chorus pedal or something. All those things are going to be printed to the signal and they're going to become permanent. So if you don't want that, you want to be able to control the parameters of the effects, then this is not the way to work. But things like compressors or if you've got a specific sound that you want to commit, this is a great way of doing it. It's very easy to do. So let's create a new track. No difference there, I'm just going to turn monitoring off a second and I'm going to set this to my input, which is my microphone that I'm using at the moment. Okay, so if we take a look at the actual channel strip underneath, you can see at the moment there's no option in there to apply an input effect. What we're going to do is we're going to arm this track and you'll see that now changes to input effects and also the same on the actual channel section by here. So we've got input effects, so we can click on there and that'll open up our normal effects browser. So with the effects browser selected, let's go through and find something like a reverb so I can show that effect on my voice. So let's come back up to all of my VSTs and let's just search for a reverb. So you've got the talent reverb selected. All we need to do is just add that to our input effects. So let's click to open up the input effects and let's just drag an instance of that on this. And we, we now have this reverb applied to our track. Now you won't see anything at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record what I'm talking about and we'll see how that reverb is printed to the audio signal. So let's just hit record and now I'll do some talking and as you can see the recording is being applied and as we do this the reverb is being applied or printed to the audio that we're recording. So let's just stop that. So now let's just play that back and take a listen and you should hear the reverb effect being applied to the audio signal. So let's just hit play and take a listen to what's been recorded. And now I'll do some talking, and as you can see, the recording is being applied, and as we do this, the reverb is being applied or printed to the audio that we're recording. So as you can hear, the reverb is now being printed to that audio, so we can't go in and edit that at all. Now obviously there are reasons why you'd want to do this, for example, like I say, if you're playing a MIDI piece but you wanted to commit the actual audio that's been recorded or played back without having to worry about having the plug-in then you can do it that way. There's lots of different reasons why you'd want to use this technique, but that's how input effects work in Reaper. Now you're not just limited to being able to apply a straightforward effect like we've done in this video. What you can also do is you can use things like MIDI controllers or expression controllers, for example, a foot pedal or any kind of sort of control method. And then what you can do is you can adjust parameters. So let's just say, for example, you were playing a guitar part and you wanted to use a volume swell or a wah pedal or something that's all done inside a virtual instrument like bias effects or something like that. You could easily do that then just control that parameter with your foot and then what you're doing is you're actually committing that effect with those different effects parameters being adjusted via your expression pedal as part of the recording. Now this is great if you're a guitarist and like I say you want to do things like use a wah pedal or volume swells or anything like that, you can do that. It's also great, like I say, if you're using things like virtual instruments and you're using a MIDI keyboard and you want to create some really cool effects like pan effects and so on, and you want those committed to make sure that every time that piece of audio is edited or used in the particular piece, it's always going to be exactly as recorded. There's going to be no differentiation as a parameter may change or the way that an effect is being applied can change based upon various different things like timings and so on. So there's lots of reasons why this is a really cool feature. So, I hope you found this video useful. Hope it's given you an insight into how you could use input effects inside your recording sessions with Reaper. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, don't forget to hit that bell to be notified every single time some new content is added to the channel. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.